Hey, what's up? My name is Jason, and today we're going to be talking about Tesla Powerwall. It's a backup energy solution for your home. It was introduced back in 2015, and since then, lots of people have had time to try it out and see how it does. In this video, we'll be talking about whether or not a Tesla Powerwall is a good choice in 2023. But first, let's recap what a Tesla Powerwall is. So the Tesla Powerwall 2 is a battery system for residential use which powers your home during blackouts and helps you avoid utility peak rates. In January 2023, one Powerwall comes at $12,500, which includes the battery itself, the gateway and the installation services that can cost around $3,000. People often get two or three Powerwalls. Now, the Powerwall almost always goes with solar panels and as a battery for a solar system, it's eligible for 30% solar tax credit which you can read about in our free guide on saving money with solar energy. We'll leave a link in the description. Okay, so Powerwall, is it actually worth the money? Well, first let's talk about how it handles power outages. You have to remember that a PV system doesn't work when the grid is down because the inverter shuts down as well. It's a safety protocol. But when you have Powerwall, it keeps your solar system working and you can live basically off grid as long as it's needed. As far as I've learned, people are really enjoying the power outage immunity that a power wall grants. Now the switch to battery backup happens automatically, and you might not even notice at first that the power is out. Your lights flicker for a second, but well, that's about it. Since the average daily consumption of a US house is at around 30 kilowatt hours, one power wall is enough to keep your house powered for half a day. Now sometimes people connect power wall to a sub panel. So only essential appliances retain power during an outage. The cumulative power of all the appliances that are turned on should not exceed 5 kilowatts. Now, the power wall can reach 7 kilowatt output, but it's not safe for the battery. The grid in America is old, and outages happen frequently. California alone suffers from over 20,000 blackout events of different scales every year, according to Bloom Energy. If you live in Kansas, California, Florida, or Northeast states, it really makes sense to get a battery backup such as Powerwall. But isn't a gas generator cheaper though? Yes, it is, but it needs fuel. It's loud, it smells, and it requires maintenance, which is an expense in itself. Now, some people claim that certain generator models don't go well with sensitive electronics. So Powerwall as a backup is certainly something that makes your life more comfortable. But can it not be only comforting but profitable as well? Well, this is where things get a little iffier, and we'll have to talk about more uh, on peak shaving with Powerwall. Uh, there are different ways to purchase electricity from the utility, and one of the more popular ways is time of use rates plan. Now, when you are on a TOU plan, your electric rate depends on the season and the time of day. Electricity gets more expensive during so-called peak times from, say, 3 p.m. to 9 p.m., and then cheaper at night from 12 a.m. to 3 p.m., and these numbers, of course, can vary. The idea behind peak shaving with Powerwall is that you charge it with solar energy and then you use this energy during peak hours. But here is where a problem arises. You see, solar panels generate energy during the day, right? And electricity either goes to your appliances or into the grid. If you are in a net metering program, then the utility pays you for the energy that you provide. If you charge the Powerwall during the day, the amount of energy that you sell into the grid and thus profits from well, it decreases. So here you have to figure out, does peak shaving with Powerwall make you more money than selling solar energy into the grid? Hmm, there are quite a few variables that you have to consider. Now, net metering programs vary, and in a few states, they aren't available at all. The terms for it, which utilities offer, vary and can be less or more profitable. The best possible net metering plan is one for one, or full retail rate where the utility buys the energy from you at the same rates as you buy from them. If that's what you have, then using energy from solar to shave peaks with Powerwall is never going to be more profitable than selling it into the grid. I also have to add that Powerwall is only 90% efficient. So if you send a kilowatt hour of solar energy, uh, you'll only get 900 watt hours or so back. One for one plan is not always available though, and some providers offer uh, for example, only avoided cost rate for buying solar, which is much worse. You see, sometimes there are limits on how many kilowatt hours the utility is willing to buy from you in a month. 
For example, a, a utility can pay for 30 kilowatt hours from you in a month and everything else that you've sent into the grid will not be credited. If export of your energy is worth dramatically less than import, then storing it to use during peak hours suddenly well, starts making a lot more sense. Now, the question of whether or not the power wall will be able to pay for itself will pretty much come down to how much energy you purchase from the grid during the peak hours and the cost of this energy. While making this video, I came across a comment on YouTube where an author describes how a power storage system helps anyone who has a peak demand charge as part of their utility power bill. Now this is a monthly fee, which is based on how high your energy use measured in kilowatts peaked during the month. The author said his utility adds a peak charge of $5.27 per kilowatt of demand. For him, it could cost about $30 added to the bill just to turn on the water heater during peak hours. The power wall, he said, took care of the peak demand, keeping it as low as possible. Now, I thought that's a really cool example. And the only thing that I'd like to note here is that as far as I know, peak demand charge is not that popular among homeowners. And instead, it's more common for commercial and industrial customers. But do I really have to charge my power wall from solar, you might ask? Can't I just buy electricity from the grid at night and then use it during peak time? Well, earlier in the video, I said that you rarely see Powerwall without solar. And the reason for this is that you couldn't charge the Powerwall from the grid unless the Stormwatch is turned on. And I say you couldn't because in 2022, some users reported that a new option appeared in the app that allowed them to use the grid for charging. Tesla itself claims that the ability to charge from the grid is set by your local utility company or installer. When Powerwall is not able to charge from the grid, you'll see a grid charging restricted message. This is most common when the utility prevents charging or when the system is owned by a third party, such as through a lease. So let's try to imagine for a moment, how well would Powerwall save you money if you charged it from the grid every night and used it fully during peak hours, just for the sake of argument. Obviously, this is a great idea, only when you are on a time of use rate band. If the utility provides energy at the same rate at all times, then there is absolutely no sense in storing energy from the grid for later. And in this scenario, Powerwall can't pay for itself this way. So let's say that a house needs 10 kilowatt hours of energy for peak hours each day. And we would purchase these 10 kilowatts for, say, 50 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, these numbers are just off the top of my head, but I have seen plans with rates like this or even close. So for this peak period, we would pay $5 per day. Now, what if we bought these same 10 kilowatt hours at night for just 10 cents each? I mean, that's just $1. By using these stored kilowatt hours, you would save $4 per day, $1,460 per year, just a little under 15,000 in 10 years. Now, these are very fortunate numbers that I picked for Powerwall, and you can see that we are just breaking even. In reality, the difference between off and on peak rates is not always that drastic, and it's more typical for summer rates. Now, there are time of use plans where the difference between peak and off peak rates is only, well, two or three cents. So what are the alternatives that we have to Powerwall 2 today? Well, other popular smart batteries come from Enphase, LG Power Solutions, and Generac. The Resu 10H is slightly cheaper and has a higher efficiency of 96%, but you can't stack more than two units together, and you need a more expensive hybrid inverter for it to work. Enphase and charge batteries are more efficient and they have a very good monitoring system. But the battery itself is more expensive and it's designed to be paired with Enphase microinverters. PWR cell from Generac is again a more efficient battery, but it is hard to add to an existing solar system, unlike Powerwall. So what do we get in the end? Well, the Tesla Powerwall is a splendid piece of equipment when it comes to surviving power outages. If you're looking for a battery for your solar system, it's a great choice. And compared to LG Chem and Enphase products, it's one of the more affordable ones. The question of whether you'll profit from it is much harder. Most often it's a no, and when it's a yes, the profits are usually small, and you'll only see them in like 10 years or so. However, in my opinion, the idea that it doesn't pay for itself doesn't mean that it's not worth it. The comforts of Blackheart's immunity that it gives should not be underestimated. My advice is, if you want a power wall, do the research on your electric plan and net metering program that your utility offers beforehand. Don't just get a power wall because it's cool, even though it kind of is. But that's all for me on that topic. Leave your comments in the comment section and uh, I might have missed something. So please let us know. 
Find the link to our free guide with tips on saving money with solar energy in the description and also go and check out our magazine and all our socials. We talk a lot about profits from solar and how to increase them. And with that, I'm Jason. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.